हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव कंप्लीटेड विद द ऑक्सीजन इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अनदर प्लांट ग्रोथ रेगुलेटर्स एंड नाउ वी स्टार्ट विद द सेकंड प्लांट ग्रोथ रेगुलेटर दैट इज जिब्रेलिंस दिस जिब्रेलिंस आर आल्सो नोन एज जिब्रेलिक एसिड दैट इज जी ए ओके so it is a another important group of growth promoting hormones if we talk about gibberellin it stimulate growth it stimulate growth largely in shoot system of plant largely in shoot system of plants and have little or no effect on roots now when we talk about discovery of this hormone that is gibberellin it was first observed by japanese rice farmers what they have observed that they have observed in rice field the normal height of the plant is approximately 2 feet but some are very long and they have reached to the 5 feet height more than that so usual height is this 2 feet by it increased up to the 5 feet and this particular long plant are abnormally tall and thin seedling are observed and they are weak and sterile means they never produced seed they never produce seed so this happens in this particular disorder where rice crops elongate compared to the normal height and this disease is called as bakane or fullis seedling this is it is known as fullis seedling disease or bakane disease now in this fullis seedling or bakane disease what was happened that we have understood now one scientist kurosawa found that positive agent of this is was gibrella fusicorai and this gibrella fusicorai is a escomycetes fungi and this is the perfect or sexual stage of it is a perfect or sexual stage of fusarium moniliforme and that fusarium moniliforme is a eutromycetes so it is a imperfect fungi but whenever the we know that in deutromycetes is known as imperfect fungi because when it is a sexual or perfect stage observed then they are moved into the ascore basidio and this is the gibrella fusicola is a perfect stage of this fusarium only forming and it is moved into the this one now the scientist observed same effect 
on rice plant with an extract with an extract of this fungus so later yabuta and sumuki isolated isolated substance responsible for for rapid growth from extract and named gibralic acid now commercial production of gibralic acid is still carried out by culturing the fungus in large vats vessels so this is all about the discovery of this gibralic now next we talk about a distribution now, next we talk about a distribution so distribution if we talk about of gibberellin this gibberellin are found in all group of plant in all group of plant such as algae fungi mosses fungus gymnosperm and angiosperm this is all plant we will found this is really acid but this gibberellin and gibberellin like substances have been observed in most of higher plant in most of higher plant that is gymnosperm and angiosperm now when we talk about the type of gibberellins the gibberellins are synthesized in are synthesized in apices of young leaves embryo bud and roots and they are transported to xylem they are transported through the xylem there are more than 100 types of gibberellic acid which was reported in different organism and they are denoted as gibberellic acid 1 gibberellic acid 2 gibberellic acid 3 and so on and more than 100 types of gibberellic acid are known out of this gibberellic acid 3 is one of the gibberellin which is most intensively studied most intensively studied form chemically gibberellins are terpenes chemicals are terpenes which is a complex group of plant chemicals related to lipids this gibberellins have given ring skeleton and if we talk about precursor of gibberellic acid then it is a acetyl
coenzyme A. It is a precursor. So this is the, all the initial informations of the gibberellin. Now we talk about the functions of gibberellins. Next we focus on functions of gibberellic acid. First function of gibberellic acid that it causes bolting. And bolting is a nothing but removal of dwarfness due to due to rapid internal elongation. So in the dwarf plant, in the rosette plant, the internode growth is poor, but large limbs appear to form a group. So in this dwarf plant, if rapid internode elongation occur, then the dwarfness will be removed and they become a normal plant. So the example of rosette plant or dwarf plant are cabbage, henbane, radish and beet in which sudden internal growth is observed that is known as bolting. Now in this we remember this rapid internode elongation occur just before flowering occur just before flowering or reproductive phase and this also required long day condition and the gibberellin treatment then this bolting can occur. Second effect or function is substitution of cold treatment. Substitution of cold treatment. Actually in case of biennial plant they flower only when they receive a low temperature during the winter season. So such plant which required a low temperature, however flower after gibberellin treatment, even if they do not receive a suitable low temperature. Thus, thus this biennial flower plant, biennial plants can be made flower. in a single year by gibberellin treatment because the gibberellin treatment every treatment will accomplish the requirement of low temperature for this biennial plants third function is parthenocarpy Dear students, Parthenocarpy is the production of seedless fruit. It is the production of seedless fruits. And gibberellin have been found to be effective in inducing Parthenocarpy or produce seedless fruits like tomato, apple, pear. Etc. After Parthenocarpy, fourth is breaking of dormancy. Breaking of dormancy. Gibralin can effectively break the dormancy of so gibralic acid can break dormancy of potato tuber
winter birds and seeds of many trees means if it is breaking the dormancy means it is causing a seed germination means it is causing seed germination and actually seed germination is inhibited by abscisic acid but seed germination is carried out by this gibberellin so gibberellin act antagonistically to abscisic acid it will act antagonistically to this abscisic acid which actually cause a seed germination seed uh, uh, dormancy and prevents seed germination it causes increase in fruit size now gibberellin increase number and size of fruit like grapes in this grapes pomelin is used and this pomelin is in nothing but a group of gibberellic acid and benzyl aminopurine benzyl aminopurine is a type of cytokine so it increases the fruit size and the particularly number of next is it promote production of male flowers okay so gibberellin is known to induce production of male flower on genetically on genetically female plant of cannabis and cucumber so it is responsible for the maleness it also promote flowering in long day plant it also promote flowering in long day plant apart from that it also carry out internode elongation like oxen the main effect of gibberellin is on stem elongation or internode elongation gibberellin stimulate stem elongation internode elongation and leaf expansion it also responsible for the leaf expansion but do not affect the growth the gibberellin restore normal size and growth is gen in genetically dwarf varieties of pear and maize it specially promote seed germination in cereals okay and can substitute vernalization vernalization or low temperature demand it also increase yield of malt from barley next it overcome dormancy means cause seed germination as we have studied it cause delayed ripening also so it a delay ripening of fruit so the fruits can be left on the plant for a more time the marketing period can be increased
इंक्रीज लेंथ ऑफ शुगर कैन सो यील्ड कैन बी इंक्रीज एंड इट कॉज अर्ली सीड प्रोडक्शन इन जुवेनाइल कॉनिफर्स with the treating them with the gibralic acid so these are the some of the effects which are caused by the or functions caused by the gibralic acid now next we talk about anti gibralins which inhibit the activity of gibralin or they are antagonistic to the gibralin so anti gibralins are A M O one six one eight. These are the different chemicals: phosphon D, C C C, chloro, chlorine, chloride, and malic hydrazine. so these are the different chemicals which inhibit the activity or they are antagonistic to the gibralin and they are known as anti gibralin now next after this we talk about the bio assay of gibralins so next is bio assay of gibralins and bio assay of gibralins are induction of alpha amylase in barely endosperm test so induction of alpha amylase or it is also known as barely endosperm test that is bio assay second dwarf maize test and third is a dwarf pea test so this different are the bio assays of the gibralin and that is all about gibralin now next we will be talking about cytokinin that is a third plant growth regulators or promoters so third plant growth regulator is r cytokinins now when we talk about cytokinin first we talk about discovery and in discovery we talk about a cook et al now what cook et al observed he observed that that when a particular culture medium in which if we put a tobacco explant and this tobacco explant proliferate or form a callus only when this culture medium contain along with auxin some of the component like extracts of vascular tissue b yeast extract c coconut milk and d dna so if along with auxin this different extract of vascular tissue yeast extract coconut milk and dna are applied in a culture medium then this tobacco explant will proliferate or divide and form callus and you know that this callus is a unorganized undifferentiated mass of the cell so first observation was like this the tobacco proliferation occur only in this condition so later on miller et al showed that yeast extract contain some growth regulators okay but which growth regulators 
so finally so finally kinetin that is n sex 6 for furyl amino purine isolated from isolated from herring sperm sperm dna herring sperm dna and yeast cells so this was done in case of the discovery of kinetic now chitin in, in artificial cytokinetic be remember the name cytokinin adopted by latham in 1963 first naturally occurring cytokinin first naturally occurring cytokinin identified from young maize grains young maize grains this maize is known as ya maize and this first naturally occurring cytokinin was named as ziatin so we remember ziatin is a natural cytokinin versus kinetin is an artificial or synthetic cytokinin and similar form of isolated from coconut milk as well so this is the discovery of the cytokine now we talk about the distribution part so when we talk about a distribution when we talk about distribution cytokine are most abundant in tissue they are most abundant in tissue where rapid cell division occur where rapid cell division occur like developing fruit root apices developing shoot buds these all are rich in cytokinin okay so this is all about the distribution and now we are talking going to talk about the functions of the cytokinin so when we discuss functions of cytokinin we come to know that as its name suggests it promote cytokinesis or cell division so first function is it promote cell division or cytokinesis especially in growing tissues second it promote morphogenesis promote morphogenesis and it is said that in the presence of oxygen, cytokinin promotes cell division even in non meristematic cells. In presence of oxygen, cytokinins promote cell division even in non meristematic tissue. even in non meristematic tissue okay and in tissue culture the mitotic division are accelerated when both cytokine and oxygen cytokine are present but in tissue culture 
when a culture medium contain when a culture medium contain more oxygen compared to the cytokinin then root initiation occurs whereas when cytokinin is more than the oxygen then shoot initiation occurs and when both are in equal concentration that is cytokinin and oxygen are in equal concentration then it will form a callus so this is the how they involved in a particularly ratio of oxygen to cytokinin involved in a development or fruit or growth fruit or shoot initiation next it counteract apical dominance counteracting apical dominance means cytokinin is antagonistic to oxygen and the meaning of this counteracting apical dominance means if apical bud is present in a plant and then also we are providing cytokinin then the literal bud start growing so literal bud will grow when apical dominance is occurring but cytokinin is provided so it is acting antagonistically to the oxygen delay senescence okay when we talk about a cytokinin it delay senescence and it is known as richmond lang effect so it delay senescence by controlling protein synthesis and mobilization of resources it help to produce chloroplast in leaves and hence this is also called anti aging hormone also known as cytokinin is also known as anti aging hormone anti aging hormone next to that if we talk about the fifth effect then it is flowering it induce flowering in certain plant like lemna and wolfia and it is also responsible for breaking the dormancy of breaking dormancy of seeds of some plants it promote it also promote phloem transport next effect is it promote femaleness and the one that is it increases resistance to increase resistance to low and high temperature and this is so these are the things where they are also involved apart from this it also increase 
शेल्फ लाइफ ऑफ कट वेजिटेबल्स एंड फ्लावर्स मीन्स इफ फ्लावर इज रिमेनिंग ब्लोजमिंग एंड इट रिमेन कंटिन्यू टू ब्लोजम आफ्टर कटिंग फ्रॉम द ओरिजिनल प्लांट अपू सर्टन टाइम पीरियड दैन दैट टाइम पीरियड इज नोन एज सेल्फ लाइफ ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दिस एंड लास्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बायोएसए द बायोएसए ऑफ साइटोकाइन आर फर्स्ट क्लोरोफिल प्रिजर्वेशन टेस्ट एंड सेकेंड सेल डिविजन टेस्ट सो इन दिस दिस बायोएसए आर यूजफुल ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट अ साइटोकाइन now after this we are going to talk about ethylene next we talk about another plant hormone that is ethylene this is a plant hormone which is actually plant growth inhibitor but it has some promoting activities also so it fit into both categories that is promoters as well as inhibitors but it has more promoting activities so uh, more inhibiting activities because of this is largely considered as inhibitors when we talk about precursor of this ethylene then it is a methionine and methionine is a amino acid we have also studied that for auxin also the precursor is amino acid that is tryptophan okay this ethylene is a gaseous hormone it is a gaseous hormone and it is effective in concentration 0.01 to 10 parts per million this ethylene is produced by most or all plant organ most plant organ but maximum production but maximum production is done by is done by ripening fruit and senescent leaves okay so this is the region where a maximum production occur so this some of the information regarding the thailand now if we talk about this hormone then unlike other hormone ethylene is a gas at normal temperature and pressure it travel not only within the plant in the intercellular spaces it also through the air from site of production to its large tissues okay which may be part of same plant or another part so the discovery of ethylene done when some of the unripened bananas get ripened when is it is placed near near to the ripened potato or oh, no, oh, oranges so based on this it promote the particular ripening so it is a ripening hormone fruit ripening hormone we call it now when we talk about the role or functions of ethylene then we come to know that it has so many physiological processes hence it is one of the most widely used pgr in agriculture so this is the question they usually ask an important statement with respect to this most widely used pgr in agriculture now if we talk about the role then first role it inhibition of stem elongation it causes inhibition of st 
stem elongation and stimulate transverse growth so plant increase in girth or girth wise so this is known as horizontal growth so it increase transverse or girth wise growth second it promote fruit ripening so ethylene is known to chiefly for its effect on fruit ripening hence it is used on commercial scale to stimulate ripening of banana apple mangoes citrus fruit tomatoes and many other fruits these fruits are picked up from the ripening and subsequently ripening can be regulated with ethylene when added so this will increase the ripening so the ripening of fruit by ethylene is accompanied by so during this during this what happens or during fruit ripening what happens sudden increase in rate of respiration so when sudden increase in rate of respiration is observed this is known as respiratory climactic respiratory climactic effect okay so this is the particular important effect with respect to the fruit ripening next is promote apogeotropism in root promote apogeotropism in root that is negative geotropism when we talk about next fourth then it cause apical hook formation apical hook formation and swelling of embryonal axis that is also caused by this ethylene it increase senescence or aging of leaves and flower sixth is it induce abscission of abscission or falling of leaves flowers and fruits it is also responsible for breaking dormancy so it break dormancy of storage organ and initiate and initiate germination in peanut seeds this is the one of the important question they usually ask initiation of germination in peanut seeds is carried out by the ethylene next low concentration of ethylene induce rooting in this rooting growth of lateral root growth of lateral root and root hairs next to that it initiate flowering it synchronize sorry it synchronize flowering and fruiting in pineapple 
means flowering will be accomplished or further be it will be followed by a fruiting that can be synchronized only by the flowering and next effect is it has feminizing effect it has a feminizing effect on genetically male plant on genetically male plant like cannabis and cucumber so it promote this type of particular femaleness or production of male flowers it cause sprouting of storage organ like rhizomes tubers and other organs by ethylene it also causes thinning of cherry walnut and cotton now here thinning means abscission of flower and fruit and fruit so these are the different component now we talk about one substance that is known as ethephon so ethephon is a aqueous solution which is absorbed slowly it is absorbed rapidly and cause release of ethylene slowly okay so it is responsible for if it is given to the fruit the fruit will absorb this ethophan and the ethylene will be released within the fruit so this is cause a different sim uh, responsible symptoms and last we talk about bioassay that bioassay of ethylene is triple response test so dear students please remember this is one of the important question they usually ask with respect to ethylene so it is our fourth hormone that we have discussed ethylene which is a inhibitor as well as promoter in next lecture we will be talking about a abscisic acid and different flowering processes okay thank you